Hey, it's me, Mario. I need to do a better voice. How do, I, how do you do Mario? Nintendo is one of my favorite franchises. After many decades, it's one of the most powerful gaming franchises in history. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how a simple character like Mario turned into many millions of dollars and what they're doing in the business world to continue to dominate after 134 years. Nintendo started as a small playing card company. Now, they dominate this space. Consoles, theme parks, even movies. Everywhere you look, you'll see Nintendo. Most people don't know that consoles are actually sold at a loss. They're called a loss leader. However, they make all their money on the back end. This is Nintendo's model. As you've noticed, they not only have the console, but they have everything that comes with it. The games, the franchising, the merchandise. That is their business model. And this is one business model that most entrepreneurs need to understand. Most entrepreneurs want to make money on day one with the initial purchase. Most billion dollar brands make money over time. Sales of the Switch device accounted for a whopping 94% of revenue in recent years. And and it's the second best gaming console in Nintendo's history. Nintendo historically has produced about 50% of all the games sold on its hardware system. One way Nintendo continually separates itself from the competitor is they've combined the console and the game. In other words, they've created entire lines that are only available on their console. So if you're a Mario fan, you know you've got to go Nintendo. What that's done is created a specific market share for them that other companies can't tap into. This is really important in business as well. How do you create a unique brand that other people can't replicate? How do you create a brand that you can franchise, you can license, you own the IP and the trademark for? Animal Crossing New Horizons release in April 2020 created higher demand for the only console carrying it. Nintendo has over 19 different gaming titles. These are all proprietary games to the Nintendo console, which means if you want to play your favorite Mario game or Animal Crossing, you gotta buy Nintendo. That is the power of these signature products. I love building signature products in many of the e-commerce businesses that I run and I'm involved in because people will go all in for a signature product. So if you can create a couple of signature products in your own company that will drive tons of traffic, then what that will do is then feed the other products on the back end. People come for one product and then they stay for the other games. For example, someone buys a Nintendo Switch because they're mad about Animal Crossing. But once they've played it for a few days or a few weeks, well then they go on the online store and start buying other games. That is called lifetime revenue. So now they're increasing how much they make per customer because of those signature games that are famous, such as Mario, Animal Crossing, Donkey Kong, Mario Kart, and of course, my personal favorite, Pokemon. I wanna be the very best. Now what's next? Merchandise. People love merchandise. People love swag of their favorite game. Look at Mario, look at Pokemon. The merchandising side and also licensing side is a massive part of the Nintendo empire. They are dominating even to this day with some of their most signature games. They're franchising, they're licensing, they're creating merchandise. They are now expanding into theme parks and even movies. Those first party games generate over 70% of its sales. Its best sellers in 2022 were all Nintendo first party games. Nintendo's also done a great job of building characters. I talked about signature games earlier. Well, Nintendo has built some signature characters that we all know and love. Donkey Kong, Link, Zelda, Luigi, Yoshi, Diddy Kong. These known characters alongside the Pokemon franchise has led to raving and loyal fans over many, many decades. As a grown adult, I still love seeing Mario merchandise or Pokemon merchandise. Not only is it nostalgic, but guess what? Mario's also red, my favorite color. Let me know below in the comments real quick, what is your favorite Nintendo character? Are you a Pokemon or a Super Mario fan? Now it's not all sunshine and roses for Nintendo. They've come into recent controversy in the last few years with litigation and legal action, not towards PlayStation or Xbox, their rivals, but towards their fans 
fans. One great example of this is the live esporting arena, where they have actual in-person tournaments. Yes, if you didn't know, people actually hang out in person and play computer games. Well, in these in-person events, Nintendo never really got involved. This led to massive in-person tournaments that Nintendo could have supported and even collaborated with. However, they never really showed interest. And when COVID hit, those tournaments went online. And it was at this point, Nintendo had had enough. They sent a cease and desist. They shut down the entire tournament, which created a ripple effect in the gaming community. This collision between the fans and the creator has led to continued resentment with many loyal fans, many of the big gaming communities, and many of the eSport influencers to this day. So the lesson here for you as an entrepreneur, even if you're as big as Nintendo, is look after your tribe. Your tribe, your community, the most loyal fans in your arena are always gonna be there to rave, to support you, and to promote you. Nintendo's star in the console world actually started with color-based TV games in 1977. That continued for a few years until they released the Game & Watch series in 1980, and then eventually the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1983. Now, the console many of us probably remember best was the Game Boy in 1989. That led to a crazy decade for Nintendo, launching the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1990, followed by a not so successful Virtual Boy in 1995, and then a highly successful rebound with the Nintendo 64 in 1996. Can you believe I was just five years old at the time? I loved the Nintendo 64 and I loved what came next, the Game Boy Color. I spent many hours catching Pokemon back on the Game Boy Color, launched in 1998. And as you know, Nintendo through the last couple of decades has had more and more success with the Wii, Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS, and finally, the Nintendo Switch line, which is arguably the most successful console in Nintendo's history, which we're gonna dive into a little later on. Now that's a long list of consoles, I get it. But the important part of why I wanted to take you through every single console there is they have continually developed new products, something that's very important for business owners. When I work with hundreds of businesses, one thing I've realized is they don't create new products until they really need to, as in until their other products are failing. However, the console world is always adapting. Just like the iPhone, you don't see Apple waiting to make a new iPhone when people stop buying the old one. No, they've got a new iPhone coming every single year. You don't see Nintendo stop making games. They're always making games. Why? Because more products equal more money. That's something you want to write down. So if you're an entrepreneur, never stop innovating. Don't get lazy, don't get complacent. Keep innovating. Your customers want to keep buying more stuff and handing you more money. Let's summarize what you learned in today's video. Number one, develop more and more products. Nintendo's been around over 100 years. They've continually developed new products and they've even expanded into new spaces. That is lesson number two. Don't be afraid to adapt, to evolve, to expand and to pivot when times get hard or industries become disruptive. They move from the trading card industry into the toy industry and then finally into the gaming industry. So don't be afraid to keep adapting. That's how you actually stay alive and even thrive. And lesson number three, expand beyond the norm. Nintendo still stays strong to its roots. It focuses on the games, but it realized there's so much money to be had in the merchandise, in the licensing. They've opened a theme park. They launched a movie last year and they continue to evolve and basically milk every penny they can get from their most famous franchises, such as Pokemon. Pokemon, Mario, and Animal Crossing. Number four is a lesson very important for businesses. They focus on not only day one revenue, but lifetime revenue. They actually lose money selling the consoles, but they know the consoles make someone dive in to the Nintendo world. And guess what? Once you become a customer of Nintendo, you're gonna buy accessories, you're gonna buy merchandise. And what are you, else are you gonna buy? The most lucrative part of all, games, software. You're gonna spend hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars on new games. And because you're a loyal fan when a new console comes out guess what you're gonna do buy the new console and repeat the entire process again that's how they increase lifetime value from one console sale to thousands of dollars over the decades and lesson number five my favorite of all creating unique characters and experiences that people buy into they've done an amazing job of creating immense characters that live through the decades I really think more brands should create characters should create identities if you're not a computer game right 
right now, that's okay. You can still create characters and identities that customers want to get involved in. And most importantly, that customers will do self-promotion for your brand. They're all of my lessons for today. I hoped you loved taking a deep dive like I did into one of the things I enjoyed the most as a kid, the Nintendo franchise. Until next time, keep hustling, and I'll see you on a new video very soon. Take care.